Hey everybody, it's John. Uh, it feels like forever since I've been able to be with y'all or since we've been able to be together. I pray that each and every one of you had a, a good Christmas holiday and uh, I'm glad that you could uh, be back together with us uh, at the most excellent way tonight. I'm not able to be with you tonight because I caught the flu or man flu or some kind of sickness that uh, is going around. My wife and kids have had it, and, and now it, I guess it's my turn. Uh, but I wanted to uh, still bring you the message uh, that I had planned to, to bring you tonight in person. And the question that I have for you tonight is, are you looking forward to a happy new year? A happy new year. We often use the term uh, happy new year because we're always looking for some type of a new happiness, right? It's, it's what we're looking for. We, people spend their entire lives looking for something new that is going to make them happy. And at the beginning of each year, we, we tend to, to look for a new program or a new thing that we can do to make ourselves happier. Maybe I want to lose weight, so I'll, I'll set out on a goal to, to exercise more or try a different diet. Maybe uh, my pursuit is I, I'm not a happy individual. I know my life isn't going the way that I want it to, so I want to try this, this sobriety thing. I want to uh, maybe ditch some things that are in my way or in my life that have got me tied down, and I want to try and break past uh, something, something else. I want to find a new happiness. Well, as we are often looking for something new, something else that can begin to bring us happiness, uh, we have to really be honest with ourselves. How long or how far are we willing to go in order to uh, achieve that happiness? Uh, why do we begin at the beginning of a new year these resolutions or things that we're going to change about ourselves and yet just a few days or a few weeks later we're going back to, to doing what we uh, were doing before or maybe we've abandoned those new goals, those new resolutions altogether. Why is that? It's because we're not really finding our happiness, perhaps because we're searching for happiness in things that we're doing or in things that we can have rather than where we should be uh, looking for real, true happiness. Now, if you have been a Christian for any length of time, you know that the only place we are ever going to find true happiness is in Jesus. This should be our focus. This should be our goal. How much closer to Him can I get in this new year? In every single day of the year. And, and He should not be something that in just a few days or a few weeks I, I, I become uh, cold to or I get tired of and, and want to be on to the next thing. Maybe in this new year, in order to achieve real happiness... Maybe I don't need to start something new. Maybe it's time that I renewed something that I'm already doing. That relationship and pursuit uh, that I have of Jesus. That relationship that I have with Him. Maybe it's time to just renew my relationship with Him. Maybe go deeper than I have allowed myself to go already. And for this, I, I'd like for us tonight to take a look at the book of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, I want to begin reading here at verse 14, and we'll go through the end of the verse there. But 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14, and I'll read from the New Living Translation. It says this, We know that God, who raised the Lord Jesus, will also raise us with Jesus, and present us to himself together with you. So this is Paul writing to the church of Corinthians or at Corinth. And, and he's encouraging them at the end of this chapter here. And he's, he's letting them know, look, our uh, goals for happiness should be 
in being with Jesus and in being reunited together with Him. It shouldn't be in anything else. But our goal should always be to want to be with Jesus, who God Himself, it says, raised uh, Jesus up, and one day God will put us back together with Jesus. Verse 15 goes on to say, All of this, all of this Christian stuff, all of this stuff that you profess a belief in, all of this is for your benefit. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving, and God will receive more and more glory. God should always receive the glory for anything good that happens in our lives because John knows how to mess things up. I know how to make a mess out of anything. But anything that, that is good that comes out of anything I do with my life, I know it's, it's the Lord. The Lord has done this. And so He should receive the glory. If I've achieved one day of sobriety, if I've achieved one step closer to any goals in my life, if I've ever done anything good, it is God. It is the Lord. I can't take credit for it. And neither can you. We'll go on with verse 16. And this is really the key to this whole passage here. It says, verse 16, that is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. Renewed. It's not that I'm trying something new. I continue to walk with the Lord. I continue to pursue Him in everything that I do because I know that each day, with each step that I get closer to Him, I am growing closer to Him. I'm being renewed. I'm changing. I might not change everything about myself that is not good. Overnight, with day one of becoming a Christian and deciding to follow Jesus, it's a process. It's a, a work we call sanctification. And the Lord continues to work in us and to change things about us step by step, day by day, as we continue to grow closer to Him, as we continue to renew ourselves in Him, allow Him to make us new creations. It's not that I need to start anything new. Maybe I just need to make an objective, make a goal that I would like to renew my relationship with Him in this coming new year. The, verse, or the, the passage continues on with verse 17. It says, For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. We all have troubles. We all come up on, uh, on things that, well, uh, today I just don't feel like doing that. Or today this came up. Or today this person irritated me. Or for whatever reason, I don't want to continue doing that thing that I was doing before. I've got problems. I've got troubles. We all get those. That's nothing new. That's nothing that's going to stop. But we should not allow our current problems or our current troubles, no matter how big we think they are, to get in the way of our real goals, our real objectives, that real goal of wanting to grow closer to the Lord and allow Him the opportunity to change us day by day, renewing us day by day. I can't allow those troubles to become bigger than my God because God is bigger than all of that. God is bigger than anything that I'm worried about today. He's going to be bigger than anything that I'm worried about or I come up against tomorrow. I have to believe that and then I have to allow him the opportunity to continue working alongside me because I have a part to play in this. I can't just say, well, Lord, you've got it and walk away and go on with my life and expect things to be perfect. I have a part to play in that I have to continually work and place my trust in Him with each problem that I come up against, with each new situation of each new day, I have to continually place my faith and trust in Him that He is going to work everything out according to His will for my good, for, for the things that He wants for me. And I have to stop worrying so much. I have to stop giving up 
too soon. I have to give him an opportunity to work. We all have to do that. The, the, the end of the passage there says that, look, I don't, I don't worry about today's problems. I, I, I don't worry about that kind of stuff because my focus is on things that cannot be seen today. Yeah, I can see the problem in front of me. I can see that person that's an issue for me or that struggle that seems to be so big. But I'm not going to concentrate on those things no matter how big they appear to be in my life. I'm going to concentrate on something that today cannot be seen. I'm going to concentrate on the Lord. I'm going to concentrate on my eternity, my forever home that lies just ahead. I don't know. It might be today. It might be tomorrow. It might be 10, 20, 30, 100 years from now. But one day, if I continue this course, if I finish this race, one day I will achieve this objective, this goal that I have of being with Christ forever, forever, in eternity, in heaven, with Him. And then I'm not going to have those temporary, small little problems that I think are just so ginormous today. In this new year, let me encourage you, as you get ready to begin these, this, the, taking steps into the new year, let me encourage you, maybe don't try to overwhelm yourself with trying something new or setting out on a new course. Again, let me encourage you. Maybe it's time to just renew the relationship that you already have with the Lord. Just try to know Him more. That's it. There's no big secret or key to this. Just try every single day to get to know Him more. How do I do that? Talk to Him. Pray. Get up in the morning. Throughout your day, talk to Him. When you're in trouble, talk to Him. Let Him know. How else do I know? I got to get in his word and allow him to talk to me through the word that he's already given me through the Bible. I have to read it every day in order to grow, to hear from him, to grow more in my relationship with him, to understand his great love for me even more so. I need to renew every single day my vow to him. Lord, today I'm going to pursue you with everything that I have. Because you are ultimately what makes me happy. It's not a new year. It's not a new thing. It's not a new workout device or a new uh, whatever. Lord, you make me happy. And I know that if I continue to pursue you with all that I have and, and everything within me, you are going to continue to be the source of my true happiness. And in that, I can begin to have a new year. A happy new year. A happy renewed year because I'm going to renew my relationship with you every single day. I'm going to take up my cross every single day. And every day, Lord, I'm going to put John aside. I'm going to put myself aside and I'm going to pursue you and your cause, the cause of Christ, every single day. Every day is a renewed day. Every day is an opportunity at a renew day. And in that, I can find real happiness. Happiness with the Lord. Happiness that only comes from Him. Happiness, true happiness that I can't find in this world. I'll encourage you. I hope that you have a good start to your new year and and hopefully I can be with you again next year, next week in our, our next meeting. But until then, I just want to encourage you, have a happy, renew year. God bless each one of you.